taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Kristen Gilbert The Angel of Death On 13 November, 1967, Kristen Strickland was born in Fall River, Massachusetts, the daughter of Richard and Claudia Strickland. Her parents were respected in the community and her father worked as an electronics executive, with her mother being a part-time teacher. She also had a younger sister. During her teenage years, it was already noticeable that something wasn't quite right with Kristen. She would do anything she could to manipulate others around her, even faking suicide attempts to get what she wanted. Her friends said that she was a habitual liar. Also at this time, she was going guns blazing with aggression, making increasingly dangerous and violent threats against others. The combination of manipulation, suicide, and violent threats, is a quite clear indication of a troubled mind. Still, Gilbert managed to graduate from high school and enrolled to Bridgewater College in 1986. This wouldn't work out for her however, as they referred her to psychiatrists after a faked suicide attempt. Eventually she would be transferred to Mount Wakusa Community College in Gardner. After Kristen still couldn't settle at Mount Wakusa, she was moved on to Greenfield Community College, where she successfully graduated with a nursing diploma, becoming a registered nurse later that year. Even though she had an awful reputation through college and she had to move several times, in 1988, the same year she became a nurse, she married a man called Glenn Gilbert. Maybe things would bet better now she had the love she so desperately craved. Her next job was working at the Vamp in Northampton, where she was respected, although people already noticed something about her. Due to the high incidence of loss of life on her wards, her colleagues jokingly called her the, Angel of Death. They didn't realize how accurate that was. In 1996, a report was produced by three nurses who were concerned about the number of cardiac arrest deaths they were seeing, they had also noticed a substantial displacement in the supply of epinephrine. Because of these concerns, the hospital launched an investigation. In an attempt to derail the investigation, Kristen Gilbert called in a bomb threat trying vainly to disrupt and manipulate the goings-on around her. Obviously her plan didn't work and in a state of flummox, due to the investigation drawing tightly around her and most of the cardiac deaths occurring during her shifts, Kristen Gilbert left the hospital in 1996. In the autumn of that year, Kristen admitted herself into psychiatric care staggering seven times. She was obviously feeling the pressure of her actions. It wouldn't be long before officers came knocking however, when the bomb threat was soon alleged to have come from her. In January of 1998, Kristen Gilbert stood before the court, accused of making the bomb threat to Northampton Vamp. Apparently she had carried out the hoax to retaliate against her colleagues, who had started the ongoing investigation into the deaths. Coming to a decision in April of 1998, the court saw through Kristen Gilbert's manipulations and found her guilty of the bomb scare. This wouldn't be the only legal charges authorities were pursuing against Gilbert however, at this point the authorities were closing in and they were coming fast. Following the suspicions of hospital staff from the VAMP, investigators gained permission to exhume several people who they thought could have been victims of the deadly nurse. All of them had been under the care of Kristen Gilbert. Through the exhumations, law enforcement gained the evidence they needed. All of the bodies showed evidence of being injected with epinephrine, a heart stimulant. Prosecutors then indicted Kristen Gilbert in 1998, on the murder charges of four people who were in her care, and the attempted murder of another three. After a thorough investigation, the staff of the VAMP suspected that Kristen Gilbert could have been the instigator of as many as 300 medical emergencies, and possibly responsible for as many as 80 deaths. It was asserted by the prosecutor in this case, that Gilbert was using these situations to show off her profligate skills as a nurse, 
or even trying to impress her then boyfriend, James Perot. It is considerably chilling that she would use somebody's life as a tool for such trivial matters. As James Perot was such an important person in Gilbert's life and also her motives, he was next to testify before the court. In his evidence he stated that Gilbert had confessed to one of the murders during one of her stints in psychiatric care. The next part of the trial focused on Gilbert's unpredictable nature and the notions of violence in her past. First it was heard, that during her teenage years she had made numerous threats to others, and that she had even used a knife during an assault in 1988, thus proving her violent nature to the court. It was said that while she worked as a health assistant before becoming a registered nurse, she purposely scalded a mentally handicapped child in her care, by putting them in hot bath water. A truly grave and sickening crime. She also threatened the life of an individual during this time with physical force. Prosecutors also went on to state that Kristen had tried to poison a patient in the VA hospital, in January of 1996, and that she had twice tried to poison someone a few months earlier, in November of 1995. It was further alleged that she had removed a breathing tube from a patient in January, 1994, causing a medical emergency that she could be a part of, therefore showing off her skills again. On another occasion, on the 9th of November, 1995, Kristen Gilbert apparently abandoned a patient who was suffering from cardiac arrest and went to do a round of checks with another nurse. She then waited until her nursing partner discovered the struggling patient, before administering care. Not long after that incident, Kristen endangered life again by forcing an untrained member of staff to use defibrillation paddles on a patient suffering from cardiac arrest. She did this by refusing to use them herself and some have speculated that she didn't want her name on the death certificate. Whatever her inclinations, it certainly wasn't the type of act one would expect from an active caregiver. On the 14th of March, 2001, the jury returned with a verdict. Kristen Gilbert was found guilty on three counts of first-degree murder. She was also charged with one count of second-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. Due to the fact the crimes were carried out on federal property, prosecutors pushed for the death penalty even though the state of Massachusetts didn't have one. They would have a hard fight however, as the defense had two very convincing mitigating factors, the well-being of Kristen Gilbert's two children. Prosecutors lost their fight on March the 27th, 2001, Kristen Gilbert was sentenced to four consecutive terms of life imprisonment. She is serving her sentence at Federal Medical Center, Carswell in Fort Worth, Texas. In July of 2003, Kristen Gilbert dropped her appeal for a new trial, after a recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling that would have allowed prosecutors to pursue the death penalty upon retrial.